Okay, thanks for watching. This is the second video in this little tutorial series I'm doing. Uh, sorry it's taken me a little while to get round to making it, but work and life gets in the way. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about processing stacks and plugins that they might use on their audio work or their voiceover work in particular with you know, when they're using Logic Pro X or Logic Pro 10. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple of very quick um, things that you might want to use. Now, a few notes about processing before we start. The general rule is with audio production when you're working as a voiceover, voiceover clients, they want no processing. Now, as a general rule, I don't use any processing whatsoever. But anything you do, uh, anything at all, um, is a form of processing to a certain extent. So if I'm speaking to the microphone here, or I pull back and I speak to the microphone here, that distance is a form of processing itself. So obviously, what they mean is uh, no kind of external computerized digital plugins. Um, pretty much everything I do goes through a high pass filter on my preamp, um, and that is a form of processing. But it's, you know, it's kind of an acceptable form of processing. Most people would argue. Um, if um, somebody is working in a top studio and they are recording voice, then it's going to be going through a massive chain with various preamps and interfaces and um, all kinds of analog outboard gear thrown in there. And all of that adds up to an awful lot of processing. What they don't want is some voiceover who doesn't really know what they're doing, going in, messing around with the EQ, messing around with the compressors, this, that, the other, and totally changing the sound of the voice so that uh, when they get the audio, it's totally unchangeable and irreparable. As I say, for voice up for audiobooks, I don't do anything except a high-pass filter. If you haven't got one on your um, uh, preamp, you can put one on here in Logic. I'll show you how to do it. So you go to Audio Units at the bottom. It's kind of hidden right down here. Apple, Audio Unit, high-pass filter. Here we go. Now, what you want to do, you want to set the set the level down to where are we 80 there we go 80 hertz and at zero decibels and what's that what that's going to do is that's going to cut off everything below 80 hertz at zero decibel level so that's basically just the turgid dirge the any kind of rumble things like that this will have a very minor effect on your audio let's just record something Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Right. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover... I'll turn that off. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Now we'll turn it on. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put... So it doesn't affect the... Um the voice at all really there's just a bit of uh, silence we'll record let's hear if we can hear a difference here so on my monitors here which are playing through my preamp I can definitely hear a difference if you're listening to this on YouTube with through your computer speakers you may not hear a difference so that's something you might want to make use of. The other things that you might want to make use of are extremely debatable, whether you want to use EQ, compressors, uh, limiters, things like that on your voiceover recordings. For certain types of work, I have different stacks um, for different clients. I've got some clients that um, are highly proficient um, audio engineers themselves, and they want totally clean audio so that they can um, lay it on top of an audio and a visual track with a soundtrack underneath and they want to do a load of editing they want to compress the hell out of it themselves but they know what they're doing so that's fine um, there's other clients that I work for they haven't got a clue um, they compress the shit out of any work that I send them and they stick it on any old mp3 soundtrack and stick it up you know and they don't really know what they're doing so in those cases they're happy for me to um, treat the audio as best I can now obviously I've got two priorities um, I want the client to be happy, but I also want my work to look and sound good to the outside world. So it's no, there's, you know, there's no point in trotting out a load of rubbish. Um, 
just because the client is happy with that. So in those situations, I've got certain stacks that will work for me, and they might not work for you. So I'm just going to pull some of them up here, so we'll stick on an EQ. Um, the compressor you will find down under Dynamics. Uh, there we go. Um, uh, limiter under Dynamics as well, I imagine. Limiter. I don't use a noise gate. There's loads of videos on noise gates. Noise gates, you can tell straight away if a noise gate's been used. And if I pull a bit of audio into RX, I can see on the waveform if a noise gate's been used. You get lovely moments of silence when you've got room tone, but then you get horrible moments when as soon as the gate opens, you can hear all the crap that's going on in the room or the recording space underneath the voice. Um, if you really need to treat that audio that badly, you're far better off getting a program like um, Isotope RX6, which is a dedicated audio cleanup tool and will do a far better job. Um, so let's turn, let's have a look at the EQ. So, we'll get, turn that off, turn that off, get rid of you, get rid of you. Yeah, so EQ. Now this won't work for you, uh, because every voice is different. If I'm using EQ, and I do for certain clients, as I say, and they're happy for me to use that, I've got certain stacks that I use for certain clients, certain stacks that I have for different clients. For audiobook work, I repeat, I don't do anything apart from a high-pass filter on my preamp. But if I am um, using uh, EQ, it's very minimal. My microphone, my recording space is pretty sound. Um, I don't need to drastically change the quality of my voice on uh, an EQ, through EQ, unless there's a particular reason, if I want to create a, a tinny sound for a, for a character or something in an advert, unless there's a, you know, a special, special effect, that's a different thing. Generally, I don't do anything, it's just about cleaning the audio and giving it a bit of, a bit of extra cut and clarity, so let's have a listen. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. So we'll turn it on. If we press Analyzer, we will see... Hi, my name's Liam, the, the audio voiceover here. chap. I'm recording a little sample here. Just if you press, click the Analyzer button again, the waveform disappears. So make sure you've got that clicked on so you can see what your audio is doing. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here. So you can see there's pretty much no vocal below 100 hertz here. Most of the, the base of the vocal is coming in between 100 and 200 hertz. That's why you set your high pass filter to 80 hertz, because the human voice won't be heard below that register. So anything below that register isn't human voice, it's external sound, which is what we're trying to cut out. So EQ, I can take this roll off and I can safely roll it up to about 100 here, and I know I'm not going to affect my voice. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little. See, there, it's not just touching to it. Mess around with if I put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with. And it has no effect on the voice. If I bring this all the way over, you'll hear the difference that makes right now. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to. And what that's doing? This is rolling off the bass. This red one here because it's Logic's EQ program is colour-coordinated color nodules, it rolls it off here, so obviously here I'm rolling off everything below 2000 hertz. Now I don't want to do that, I want to roll everything off below 100 hertz to cut all that turgid bassy crap off. Now you might argue, well that's having the same effect as a high pass filter, and to many extents it is. The other thing you might want to do as a male voiceover, and it's different for female voiceovers, quite often between uh, three and five thousand kilohertz, a lot of people like to have a slight vocal boost. So here they might give themselves a little boost like that, um, ever so small, just maybe one and a half, two decibels, something like that. Not not a lot. Um, let's have a listen. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Hi, my name's Liam, the... Now, as you can see, the vocal here is rolling off quite a lot on the analyzer, which is why you might give a little boost there. I use a TLM-103, and the TLM-103, the Neumann mic, has 
a natural boost around that frequency anyway. So I don't need to use that. So I'll turn it off. If you are finding that you need to do a bit of this uh, and uh, a bit of this and then a uh, then where are we? A bit of that, you know. Then there's, you know. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover channel. You shouldn't be doing that, really. That's a lot of extra work that is getting in the way of what your primary job is, which is recording voice. Um, if you're having to really go to town on the EQ, then take a step back and really listen to the work that you're doing, and and maybe just think: Is there something better I can do in the space that is going to let my voice? come through it's not about creating a voice that you sound that you think sounds nice it's about creating a true and accurate reflection of what your voice actually sounds like not creating a voice that you think sounds really nice but rather something that is actually representative of what you actually sound like uh how many times the first time you ever listen to yourself on microphone do you go oh my god it doesn't sound anything like me first thing we all say when we uh, first hear ourselves compressor here we go so now as a com on a compressor sometimes i use a compressor just because i want the sound that i want the sound effect of having the audio go through a compressor even though the compressor is not turned on so the settings might all be at zero and there might not be any compression taking place but just because the audio is going through that plugin, even though that plugin is not active, it is having an effect on it. It's exactly the same as in if I plug my or if I play my audio through one microphone or another microphone, or it goes through one preamp or a different preamp, the audio has not changed. But just by virtue of the fact that it is going through a thing, a physical thing, either an analog bit of outboard or a digital bit of outboard like this, it is going to have an effect on the audio. Now sometimes you might quite like the sound that it creates, which is why Logic gives you all these different presets of uh, um, preamps. Let's have a listen to some. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects. Now, the settings aren't changing here. All we're doing is changing each of these options. Now, what these op options do is they represent actual analog compressors that you that you know that that were used in recording studios i quite like this one um there are lots of presets here voice you might go to narration vocal still a little high for me 411 that's that's a high ratio that might turn that down turn the threshold down uh where are we Turn the re release and attack. We want quick attack and release. Now, on a bit of audio like this, single input voiceover recording, unless we're doing something really zany like some mad character work, if we're just speaking, if it's a corporate, if it's an e-learning, if it's something like that, generally your levels are going to be pretty static. You're not going to be jumping around in terms of your um, decibel levels. You should be hitting a fairly consistent rate. Same with audiobooks, really. I mean, yeah, you have peaks and troughs, but you're not going to be kind of screaming into the microphone one minute and then whispering right on it the next minute. You know, it, it, you should be, you know, a lot smoother than that in terms of the recording process. So on here, we should see very little movement at all, if any, especially on this. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. So you see the compressor hardly engaged there. It engaged when the needle moved, which was right at the beginning. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with... And then it settled down it didn't engage at all for the rest of the piece. So it's very minimal compression. And it's not really going to have a big effect on the sound. Like, it's not like a piece of radio imaging where you listen to it. And the sound is really squashed because it's almost like fairground voice. You know, scream if you want to go faster. That kind of really squashed radio kind of sound that is kind of indicative of that genre, that style of voice. Obviously, that's not the kind of thing you want to go for when you're doing an audiobook. But it's something that you might want to put in your stack um, for certain types of work if you're kind of trotting out audition after audition after audition. I've got an audition stack that I use. Um, what's this? Limiter, right? Yeah, so on your limiter, uh, output level, turning down to minus zero, minus 0 0.3. So nothing is hitting over three. 
my, I can't get my words out. Nothing is hitting over zero point. <laughs> Nothing is hitting above minus zero point three decibel, which is kind of the industry standard for the uh, peak audio level you want to hit. Um, there is a little trick that I do on here sometimes. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to... If we look down here, you will see that this level here won't go above um, minus 0 0.3, which is what we want, because we don't want any peaks above that. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. Now, a little cheat you can do is sometimes for auditions, and auditions only, I might put a decibel or a decibel and a half of gain on. Why would I do that? Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording. Well, it's just to give a little boost because if everybody else is trotting out auditions after auditions after auditions that are all coming in at the same level, and all of a sudden, if a client's listening to 30 auditions and then they listen to mine, it's kind of the same level, but it's just got a bit more presence because it's half a decibel louder than the minus 0 0.3 limit that everybody else has got set. So if mine's coming in just a tiny little bit louder, it might be a trick that you might want to look at to make your stand out a little bit more. Um, or not. Here's another little trick that you might want to look at buying. It is a plugin called Waves NS1. Now, Waves NS1 is a noise removal tool. It is not a means to an end by any uh, uh, stretch of the imagination, but it's a great tool to get. Waves have sales all the time. Um, I don't know how much this is to buy full price. I think it retails at something like $99 or maybe $149, something like that. To be honest, it's worth that. But I picked this up for something like $25 on one of the sales that they seem to have all the time. If you're on the mailing list, they do these sales all the time uh, throughout the year. And this, I got this for something like $25. $30. It is amazing. It's basically um, it's basically a, 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 a souped up noise gate, but it really works quite well. I don't know the exact algorithms or the mechanics behind how, how it works. All I know is I've, I've tested it to death. I've tested it in various platforms. I've run it through RX and things like that. And it's, it's good. I wouldn't... Let me record some silence so you can hear... Hello, hello, hello. Testing one, two, two. Right, so if I engage it here, let's listen. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here. Just so you can hear the audio is totally squashed. Um, I don't know if the audio you're hearing when I play this is playing out of the monitors, coming into the microphone and going back into the computer. So it might sound a bit crap. Um, it might be that, the because I'm recording this as a screenshot video on QuickTime, so I'm not altogether sure how the audio has been picked up um, when I play you back what's recorded here. But it, I'm sure you can hear that. It sounds pretty shit. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover ch However, if we turn it all the way down... Chap, I'm recording a little sample here just to mess around with... You can see here, that yellow bar, that comes down when it's engaged and put a few effects on to see how it sounds. See that? If I turn it all the way down. So it's not engaging at all. Hello, hello, hello. Testing one, two, two. Hi, my name's Liam, the voiceover chap. I'm recording a little sample here just... So it's not affecting the voice. It doesn't look like it's working. Well, why use it? Well, here's the thing. I'll turn it off and listen. Did you hear that? Now I'll turn it on. Listen to the same thing. That sound has gone. Now what you can hear in this room at the moment is um, the fan from the iMac, because I'm on the iMac in the control room, not the booth. So there is um, a little bit of noise bleeding through from that. But generally speaking, just by having it on, in the same way that we had the compressor on, but without putting any settings on so all the settings were dialed down to zero the same thing is true with this the setting is dialed down to zero but because it's on it's having an effect 
And the noise removal on this, even when it's turned down to zero, is brilliant. Now, if I'm in a quick fix, if I'm recording on the road, I've got this on my laptop as well. This will be the go-to thing that I use on my laptop. Um, I might do repairs and things like that in RX. I'll do another tutorial at some point on some of the features that I like to make use of in RX. There it is. Um, but that's a different playlist. This is this is for this now. When I'm on the Mac and I'm on the road in a hotel room or whatever, this is a brilliant kind of way of trotting out some good, clean auditions or if you've got any pickups or this or that. It's not ideal. I'm sure the best engineers would be able to tell that it is engaged, even if it's dialed down to zero. But for the money, for $25 as a quick fix, it's a brilliant tool to put in your bag. Um, and I'm sure that if you, you know, for, for, for me, I, I used it once in a hotel room within about a week of getting it and it paid for itself. So, yeah, highly recommend it. So that's about it. Some bog standard basic plugins that you might want to look at for voiceover recording. I'm not saying, again, I reiterate, um, I do not use plugins like this when recording voiceover for clients. I have certain stacks that I make use of for certain clients who are happy for me to process and boost the audio. Certain clients ask me to put the audio on top of the backing music because they don't really know how to do it and they want to get the levels right. So I do that for them as well. You know, that kind of mastering side of things. But if you want to make some audio yourself, if you want to do some samples, if you want to have a go at making some demos, these are some things that might give your audio a bit of cut, a bit of clarity and... Uh, a bit of quality. I hope that helps. Uh, leave a comment. If it doesn't help, um, go and leave a comment on somebody else's YouTube video. The next one will be the one you've all been waiting for. Punch and roll with pre-roll in Logic Pro. But you've got to give me a few days because I'm knee deep in about eight audiobooks at the moment. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.